Welcome to another video in the SOLIDWORKS Formula SAE tutorial series. This video will cover exhaust modeling tips and tricks. In today's video, we'll be going over some techniques for modeling an engine exhaust. We won't go through the entire modeling process, but we'll point out some useful tips and tricks and give you a general framework so you can model your own. Of course, there are many ways to do this, so everything here is just recommended. And if you have a better way, please let us know in the forums. Specifically, I'll be focusing on the exhaust runners, as these are some of the most complicated parts to design. They often have to route and work around many different components in the car, as well as being frequently built to specify the lengths, bend radiuses, and various other criteria. Also for this tutorial, I'll be using a slightly simplified example, using just the engine and the frame to model this exhaust. Your car will have many more design constraints, but this should be enough to just show you the basics. The first thing I've done is gone ahead and created a new in-context part that I'll be using for the exhaust model. Next, I created a few preliminary sketches and planes that are going to help define the constraints of the exhaust. I created a plane in front representing the firewall, a plane in back where the exhaust collector is going to attach. Using convert entities, I've created a sketch of the exhaust manifold, and I've also created a simple sketch of where I'd like the exhaust runners to end up. These four points here. Now I can begin sketching the preliminary exhaust using a 3D sketch. It's important to have the frame showing so I know where to route around it, but for this example I'm going to hide it to make things easier to see. I'll begin by sketching a very rough straight line diagram of the exhaust, making sure to keep my endpoints perpendicular to the exhaust manifold and the header collection point. This part of the modeling process is not exactly trivial and there are a few important things to remember. First, control Z is your friend. If anything happens that you don't want to happen, don't fear, be afraid to just press undo and go back. 3D sketching can be very finicky and you might have to change your viewpoint four or five times in order to move the point properly to where you want it. The other important thing to remember here is to avoid constraints. Except for the lines coming out of the collector point and out of the manifold, you should try to avoid using constraints that are put in automatically by SOLIDWORKS, like along X, along Y, along Z, or constraining to any points or planes. When we're trying to fine-tune the exhaust model later, these will definitely cause problems. The next thing I'm going to do is add fillets. The fillet dimensions that you add will be highly dependent on the radius that you can bend your tubing at, or what the capabilities of your tube bender are. You'll also probably want to specify different radii for different parts of the exhaust. But for simplicity, in this example, I'm just going to be specifying one radius for almost all the bends in the exhaust. Now we'll use the weldment tool to put in the pipes for our exhaust and see how they fit together and make sure there's no intersections. The next step is to check for intersections in our exhaust pipes. This model I sketched up looks pretty good except that there appears to be one intersection right here. To solve this, it's as simple as right clicking on the sketch, clicking edit sketch, and then moving the points around until I find something that works. I'll now bring the frame back in so we can see how the exhaust tubing fits and as you can see not very well. I'm going through several of the frame tubes. This is definitely why you should be modeling your exhaust with the frame showing. Of course this is easy enough to fix. I can just come back in and adjust some of these points and maybe even adjust my exhaust collector point down a little bit which will change where my muffler is located but as long as that works with the suspension that's not a problem.
As you can see, getting your exhaust model right will take a lot of slight tweaks and little adjustments. I'll now skip ahead to a completed exhaust model and show you one more thing, how to measure the length of the exhaust tube. For many teams, this measurement will be critical to the tuning of their engine, so we need to check that they're the proper length, make some adjustments if necessary, and also make sure that the exhaust tubes are of all equal length. In this model, I've modeled all four runners as separate parts. This is just another way to do it, but for this example, it will make it much easier. I'm going to open up a single runner, and then take a look at the 3D sketch that outlines its profile. The simplest way to do this is click on the Evaluate toolbar, and then click Measure, and select all sections of the line of this specific runner. Of course, if we're constantly tweaking things, we don't want to have to do this every time we change the model just to check the runner length. So there is another way, slightly more complicated, but will provide us flexibility later. To do this, I'm going to add some extra driven dimensions. We already have dimensions for the straight portions of the tube, but now we need to add arc length dimensions that we can use later on. To make an arc length dimension, click on the arc, and then click on both add points, and it will define a dimension that we want driven, marking out the length of the arc. Once I have all the arc lengths in as these driven gray dimensions, I can now start using them in equations. So I've already created a couple equations, and I'm going to walk you through them. There's a lot of different possibilities here for you to use arc length to drive different dimensions of the exhaust. I'll go ahead and pull up all the equations at once. You can see I have one active equation, and these two equations are commented out by putting a single apostrophe in front of the equation. In the first equation, I've just summed up all of the different dimensions on this sketch that I would be using, such as the individual lengths, as well as the arc lengths, and called the result length 1 which you can see evaluates to 45 inches. So every time I make a change in the model, I'll be able to look at this equation window and see what my new value is for the length of the runner. We can also use equations and the arc lengths to drive other dimensions in the model. The commented out example in green shows this, where I'm driving dimension 7, which is this dimension right here, by subtracting all the other dimensions from the length, which I've then set in another equation at 43 inches. In other words, here I know I want my exhaust length to be 43 inches, and I'm driving a dimension so that it will always be that length no matter what changes I make. For any comments, questions, or suggestions, please send me an email at sfalkner at solidworks.com. This will also be the last video in our current Formula SAE series, and we're going to start doing videos on Baja cars. If you have any comments or suggestions, feel free to send those to me as well, and look for the new Baja videos to be coming out in a couple weeks.